Hello everybody. Welcome to the Golden Goal Show. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 23. Welcome watching on YouTube and on Spotify. And if you're here watching from PSG's box right now, Ah, you're probably in trouble and you're probably gonna get swatted soon because they are in big trouble over there. I didn't want to talk about it, but everybody, welcome to the show. Let me first introduce you to my co-host of the show, Emilio. How are you doing? Make it pasa. Man, I'm doing great. Manchester United are just banging it this year. We're we are I am so hyped about it. Mm -hmm. wow. Alright, well, let me introduce another fan that may actually be, you know, aligned with me right now. Veronica, a Tottenham supporter. How are you? Be sad with me. Cry. Please cut. Let me hear your tears. Uh, you know, I'm actually feeling great because I've never heard of the FA Cup before in my life. I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I'm in a really good mood. Uh, uh -huh. Never right. heard of it. Yeah, well, hey, I'm glad to have you on, and this is therapy for us. I swear, every show you've been on the past couple months, it's been therapy. So. Yeah, okay. I, I just can't believe it. I, I, <laughs> Whatever. It's okay. It's okay. I believe you there. Uh, you know what? For that, I'm just going to do a big old... <gasps> there we go. That's for you. All right. Well, Fair. introducing another guest on the show, a new guest, Felipe, a Barcelona supporter. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I mean, I mean, I'm. <laughs> I don't know if I could say I'm great. I, I'm a Chelsea fan right now, so you know, it's it's tough. It's it's tough out there. We are. <clears throat> okay, let's not talk about my sorrows. Please. Sorry. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> welcome to the show. Do you want to have any introductions, shoutouts, or you know, just say what your favorite lasagna is? <laughs> so, uh, my name is Felipe. Uh, I play uh, for a USL two team uh, called the Villages SC. The USL two is is in the soccer pyramid behind the USL championship and then the MLS. I'm trying to uh, eventually play professional, um, and I'm kind of that's kind of where I'm at in my in my journey. But I'm happy to be on the show and and it's a really cool experience. So thanks right. for having me on. Yeah, of course, of course, and we do actually support you. We're gonna fund you. Um, as you know, I am friends with Mr. Beast. And, okay, I'm not going to get your hopes up. I, I do not know Mr. Beast. All right. But hey, I'm glad to have you on. And thank you for making <laughs> on me. All right. Well, first, let us talk about... Okay, where's my sound effect for this? All right. Um... There we go. All right. It is great. I'm the show guy. And I don't... Um... Yes. Okay, first break we can talk about... I don't know if you guys heard about this. Veronica, you kind of told me about this, but PSG Preston. Ah, it's a little, little, little fishy situation. I mean, um, so the PSG president, oh, okay, I guess it stopped, didn't like me. That's okay. But PSG president impl implicated in kidnapping and torture investigation. We love to hear it. Um, Veronica, I may not have the whole story with me. Do you happen to know anything about this? I'm still looking around. I, to be honest, like, I don't know all the details. On it. it seems like it was uh, somewhat of an extended issue where in Qatar, uh, there was some holding of someone who was supposedly, like, had sensitive information relating to the president, the PSG mm -hmm. president. And A French so Algerian lobbyist had sensitive documents related to Qatar being awarded the 2022 FIFA World Cup, along with being media winning the bid to air the tournament in 2026 and 2030. Ooh. Yeah, so it sounds like it's like, you know, it's one of those things where, from what I understand, there's an open investigation. They wouldn't be making a public statement like this unless they were, like, relatively sure that you know, mm -hmm. they had uh, pretty strong ties or or bits of information. But of course, it's all alleged at this time, just protecting you from libel and everything. Yep, It's alleged at this time. And I don't know what the consequences would even be from it, because it's one of those things where you're going after someone very powerful with a lot of money and resources. So even if they do find something, I don't know how much they can do, but it'd be pretty like interesting to see what happens here because I don't know 
Like there's, he has a lot of influence right now. And I don't know if anyone's seen the Apple TV documentary for like the war on football or anything, but he's pretty prominently Ooh. included in that and sort of a savior of football along with UEFA. Sorry, it's a, it's about the Super League. Um, uh, so it, it's just kind of, it's an interesting, it's an interesting story to have come up and it's a uh, pretty, pretty uh, messed up. So interesting to see what happens next. And, uh, okay, well, before we get docked or anything, we can move on. All right, another, um, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the button? Where's the button? Just when you think. (laughs) All right, next news. Real Madrid fans are racist. Oh my God, guys, this is the first time I've ever heard this in my life. Yep, so basically, um, um, Real Madrid fans Races towards Alaba because he voted for Messi instead of Benzema. And in an interview, Alaba said that his vote is not just his vote. It's the vote of the whole Austrian team that votes. So it's gathered together and he said he had nothing to do with it. And I don't. he shouldn't even have to be coming out to be apologizing or anything like that. So Definitely not. Yeah. I don't know. I was about to say, what does he have to apologize for? Dude voted for Messi, so leave him be. Yep, I mean, I mean, I'm, I, it's tough. It, it's tough to say. I just feel so bad for the Real Madrid players. They've been through so much. Vinny first, and now, now Alba as well too. No, not nice. Not nice. Okay. Well, going to, I guess, news that's a little light. I don't know if you can say lighter, but, um, yeah, I can actually ask Veronica about this. So, French women's players are not wanting to play for the national team. And this is impacting the coming World Cup that is going to be for the women's. And I believe that's going to be in Australia, correct, if I'm not wrong, Veronica? Yeah, Australia and New Zealand. Okay. So- and so, yeah, the the situation is really interesting across women's football because uh, it's always been, you know, there's been a discussion of, like, equality of pay, equality of funding and resources. And that's something that's ongoing, but it is very interesting because the popularity of the women's game has increased significantly in the last like five or so years. Definitely. And off of the excitement of the men's World Cup, there's a lot of opportunity to capitalize on this coming World Cup. And the women's Euros last summer were some of the most attended na- like international games in history for a women's game. So it's like there's a lot of stuff to to push off of and there's a lot of federations that have a lot of talent that could go into this World Cup really pushing for it. Um, And kind of one thing that we're noticing is a lot of women are, you know, standing up and speaking out against their federations for not providing them resources that they deserve at this point in order to succeed. So you've seen that with Canada and with Spain, but with France, it's especially interesting because uh, Wendy Renard, who's been, you know, a top player for France, a top player for her club, for, you know, like, I, I can remember being scared of Wendy for, like, eight years, ten years. I, I've been scared of Wendy for a long time. Does this have to do with the, the France coach at all? Like, I remember you told me yeah. that time. Yeah, oh. so so th- she basically stood up and said, the fr- Federation is not setting up, us up to succeed. This is too much. We're not, we're not, I'm not going to play. And a oh. huge part of that is the fact that Corinne Dacry, who's the French national coach, she's awful. She's like <laughs> known bad person. That should known crazy. very like abusive, bad person, plays a lot of mind games, is not even tactically up for it. Like just, just actually a conundrum why she still has a job and the french team has had has been loaded with talent for so long Mm -hmm. the only reason they have not won something or gotten close to winning something is because of the manager and i think there's enough popularity in the game now in the women's game now that and, and enough knowledge about daiquiri publicly that she should not be in charge that basically the women's players are saying we're not going to deal with this so renard stepped up first and then also diani and marie antoinette katoto stood up and said that they wouldn't be participating in the world cup and those are three really really important players for the french national team 
Um, uh, if you have time later, look up Diani's goal in the Euros. I think it was against, I can't remember who it was against, uh, maybe Germany. It was awesome, really good. It, it just, it ruins the ability of, of like the, the game to like grow more because when you have these players that everyone's very excited to see or to watch in a world cup and they can't go because they know their federation is not putting any resources into them or supporting them or actively letting them have a like abusive, terrible coach for a really long time. That's sad. You know, it, it ruins the spectacle. So, and also Absolutely. obviously it's more yeah. than, yeah, it's more than that. Like these athletes, work their entire lives to get to this level and they deserve respect and they deserve uh, an opportunity to put it all out on the table. And if the Federation is actively going against them by setting them up with a terrible coach and it continues to happen, it's just terrible. And that's how it is for the Spanish women's team too. Their coach is bad. So it's just one of those things where you're seeing players say they won't have it anymore. And it's, it's really good, but it's also sad that they have to like miss out on another World Cup because they need to make a statement for their other players and for the future of of the game. And do you think it's going to so stop anytime they're... soon? Sorry. There you go. So, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Is there a question? <laughs> yeah, I had a question. So, so they're uh, they're definitely boycotting the the world cup right or is it if if they replace the coach for france they might come back but nothing has been confirmed yet i think as long as daiquiri's coaching they will not play gotcha and and what what are some of the examples do you know any examples of the i guess the behavior of the coach that has made them not want to participate i think it's isn't it filmed or something like that i'm isn't there like video evidence of her being like a dick to everybody or something like that? That might be, but like the really well known ones are like she's, you know, left certain players out of the squad or camps for disagreeing with her or saying anything against her. Um, like during the Euros, uh, Amandine Henri was left out and Lisa Mayer was left out because they they didn't agree with her on something. And it wasn't like you know, a huge fight. It was like, you know what? I, you spoke against me. You disrespect me. You're out of my plan. There's like actually insanely detailed reports on all the things she's done. And she got, she was actually coaching a men's team on the second level uh, of French football. She was the first woman to coach a men's team in France. And she got let go because she treated the like players so poorly. Like, Oh, they, wow. There are men's players who will talk about how like terrible she treated them while she was coaching. So it's like, I, 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 it's like one of those things where there's a ton of like, like whispers and documentations of just her being like, like unnecessarily manipulative to try to like push people to their breaking point, thinking that's the way to win instead of, you know, building a strong understanding and building a good team atmosphere instead it's about pushing every single player to their limit and if they break then they're out and that's kind of what right. it seems to have been and also the thing is like it it's like one thing to be just... yeah it's like that and it's like it's one thing to be like a super eccentric coach but you have to have the tactical like ability to back it up and she doesn't right. have yeah. that either so it's like, yeah. I don't know what she has on the French Federation that keeps her in a job, but she she really shouldn't be there. Like, we, I, yeah, it, it's, it's, I think anyone who's watched the women's game for, like, since the last World Cup knows she has no business being in a job, pretty much. Right. right. And do you think it'll get better anytime soon? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, great. Then. I, I can hope, but I don't. I think the problem is, uh, as, like, I think the English FA, and I'm not saying they're perfect, but they are setting a pretty good example of if you invest in your team, 
and you treat them with similar resources to like the men's game, like you'll get an insane result because the English women's team are like legitimately very good and scary right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's not even like Lauren James, Queen. Lauren James is insane. Queen. (laughs) She's so good. And it's like Uh when you can put on like Rachel Daly or Alicia Russo or Ella Toon and all like you have so many options in every position. Like, I, I don't know if I can say that about pretty much any other nation right now going into the World Cup. And they have one of the best coaches in the women's game, I would say, in Serena Vigman. So you're saying so like, over U.S., they're better? 100%. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was about yeah, to say, no. I was going to see if you're going to fight me about over that, but okay. No, right. I think if, if the U.S. were to play England, we would win more by on the backs of an individual talent, like, Mallory Swanson and uh, Sophia Smith are insane. They're really good. They could win a game even if you're terrible. But, like, England as a team and as an individuals look amazing pretty much every time they play. And so it's one of those things where you do have an example of how to do a good job. And you see, like, you know, incredible athletes who are talismans for their teams stepping up and saying, I'm not going to deal with it anymore. But I think it's going to take, like, a lot of restructuring the institutions in order to make things better. And it's only going to get better first for the teams that have, like, a lot of attention on them. So, like, France is a huge team. Mm -hmm. Spain is a huge team. Canada is a huge team. Those are going to be addressed. But there's a ton of other teams, like South American women's teams and, like, Caribbean uh, women's teams that get this treatment if not worse and we'll have to fight like three times as hard to have things fixed for them so yeah i don't know i think it's going to be a long time but and, at least and it's it going somewhere me, at least it's going yeah somewhere. it's going somewhere it just makes me sad that like you know R- wendy won't be able to have another world cup because uh-huh. this is like a bad situation you know like the athletes themselves have to make the sacrifices to make things better Hey, you and never know. Sucks. She might come back and coach. You never know. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. That that'll be my new hope with that. Thanks for You're the welcome. silver lining. You're so welcome. <laughs> there you go. Okay. How, how do you Thanks. see? Can I ask a question? How do you yeah. how do you see the the U.S. women's national team doing in the World Cup? Um. So, I I I watched them recently, and it it is the situation where I think. A lot of players are asked to be played out of position unnecessarily. And there isn't the same, like, I think the same, like, connection with every player right now. Like, there was this core of U.S. women's national team players that just understood each other for so long. And I think they were so terrifying to watch. And they were, like, on an individual basis, often better than their opponents. I think after watching the Euros last year and then watching friendlies from the U.S. Women's National Team, I think we still have the individuals that, you know, either are better or on the same level as all the best players on any of the, like, European teams I've watched. But it's just, like, they're missing something where it seems like they survive a game and then individuals bail them out and win it for them instead of, like, the team winning together. So gotcha. I think they'll still go far because of their talent, but I don't think we'll win this one. And as much as that makes me sad, because I'm like, like I have been blessed with their success. Like my entire life, I've watched an extremely like successful soccer team, but it shows good things for the women's game if they don't have like a monopoly on every single trophy. So Absolutely. I can look at it in a positive way. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. But definitely during the World Cup, watch Sophia Smith. And if she's back from injury, Katarina Macario, because she's insanely good. I'm getting the French Women's kit for the World Cup, by the way, Veronica. So I hope you're proud oh of me. Oh, my God. It's so cool, too, honestly. I've been wanting to get it for a long time, so I'm, I'm happy I'm going to get it. So. Yeah, and it's probably cooler. The U.S. kits aren't that good, so you probably are they using the, the right s- choice. the same men's one, or are they using different? Yeah, they're using the same men's one. I mean, yeah, I those are so cool. Yeah, even though I have one, my I have the blue one. <laughs> okay, the blue one is better than the the home kit. It's better yeah. than the home kit. Yeah, definitely. 
Well, I mean, it's it, you can't get worse than the Tonham third jersey, so we're good. We're that good. that is true. Okay, I'll accept that. That that doesn't bug me because I agree. Well, you know what? Another news: <laughs> Ancelotti and Luis Enrique possibly are going to coach Brazil, the national team. So I mean, crazy, right? I mean, even though today I kind of heard Luis Enrique. Oh, that's Michael Jackson. Um, even though today, <laughs> uh, Luis Enrique, there is some rumors that he might coach Chelsea if Graham Potter is dropped. So, but then again, Ancelotti and Luis Enrique to coach Brazil that would be absolutely amazing. I would love to see that. Even though, like, they're already who is the former coach of Brazil? Does anybody know that? I, I... it's <sighs> isn't it his name like Tito or something. Yes, that's a good drink too. But what's his name? Um, Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. I, I'm just thinking of it right now because it's on the tip of my head. Ooh. By the tip of my it's, head, it's it's the tip of my head. definitely definitely tita. not looking it up. No, 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 no. I, I have the most ball knowledge out of anybody and and <laughs> anybody. So yes, of course, Tite. So I can say his full name because I know it because I'm a I'm a great person for shows. Uh uh, Adenor Leonardo Bacci, commonly known as Tite, Brazilian professional football coach and former player who's head coach of Brazil national team from 2016 2022. He played for 19. Okay, I don't even have to say his whole religion and everything. So, oh, good for him. He was parents are from. I don't. Okay, sorry. Yeah, but yeah, that's cool. Very cool. All right, next news. All right. Um. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do. That now, guys. Um, football is back finally. I know football hasn't been back for the past year. For, no, 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 a couple of months or so. I say football hasn't been, you know, played completely to its hundred percent. And you might be saying right now, Shane, what are you on about? Please shut up. But I have to say, the goat is back. Matan Ibrahimovic is back from injury, and he is back which means football is back so Zlatan is not back to football football is back to Zlatan and this means if you do the hypotenuse of the triangle Chelsea FC will become a great club again thank you very much that is my TED talk all right well that was the breaking news any guys have any breaking news or possibly want to say anything that broke today besides your heart I don't want to hear your sob stories um <laughs> what do you guys think about the the Super League kind of getting past some of their legal issues with UEFA? Wait, wait, wait. Again? <laughs> no, no. no. Yeah. I mean, I think that was like last week. It wasn't break. It's not breaking news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just it seems like that's inevitable. Yeah. Well, it's gonna the happen. Thing is, like, it's gonna happen eventually. I, don't know. I think that the, no, you're totally right. I mean, like it's just. <laughs> As long as they can make more money and they find a way to make more money, they're going to try to do it. Uh, and it's just about how long people can hold them off before they actually do. Yep. Right. Yeah, but, but, like, yeah, but then if it, yeah, but then if it, if the Super League starts, then what's the point of having the Champions League? Well, that's the point. Yeah. There it'll wouldn't be a it. point. It'll replace it. it. it like, yeah, it'll it'll so I guess the the ideal for the for the people who own the Super League teams is that the Champions League will exist but slowly become less profitable over time because all the quote unquote best players will be in the Super League. But I think the thing is like, you know, I don't I don't know how well that'll work because I don't know if the the you know, hype or excitement around these best players will be the same if they don't have their come ups like the ones we like watch now do in stuff like the Champions League. Like, yep. You know, where where was uh, Mbappe before PSG? He was at uh, Monaco. Monaco, and so it's like we got the hype of him at Monaco before he went to PSG. Like, or or like what Napoli is doing now, like the hype of those players is going to take them probably to 
one of those like big six clubs, but it's only that exciting because they came from like a team that isn't yep. already super powerful. Like I don't pay as much attention to Holland now at city that I did at Dortmund. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. I hear that they're doing like a, a whole new format, like the super or a, like an 80, an 80 team format because of the backlash that they got from the first time. So who knows what their their ultimate plan is going to be, but it it's just going to be about money at the end of the day. Yep. So, you That's know. so funny that they're doing 80 teams. That's crazy. I mean, at least they're yeah. trying to fix it to more, include more teams. So No, that's what, what, that's what I was thinking What too. they do is what, what they do is they would do the 80 team and then – slowly it would become inaccessible like they're just like extending the timeline because the ultimate thing is getting to like all of us have guaranteed a lot of money and that all of us would be you know anybody who already is rich pretty much it wasn't wasn't that wasn't there wasn't that their whole point just to get the best teams when they first tried to do it it's the american model it's not even the best teams it's the teams with the most money coming in the most influence so, like, for uh-huh. example, why would you – sorry, and I I mean, I'm a Tottenham supporter, but it's, like, it's not like we are a guaranteed qualification to the Champions League. When they announced the Super League, we weren't in the Champions League, you know? Like, they're doing that because of the influence they see from the team. So it wouldn't be about merit at all. It would be about influence, about reach, about existing – you know equity and stuff like that it's it's just about trying to like develop a closed system where you have guaranteed money and you don't have to worry about promotion relegation or um qualifying for any competition that gets you more money because basically they were annoyed that oh if we don't make it to champions league then we're our current business model won't work or what we plan Mm -hmm. to spend won't work it's just bad Uh, mismanagement that's the that's the point. It's it's to to fear losing, to fear uh Relegation. being you know relegated or just not making top four, and that's that's the beauty of it, you know. It and, I, and I'm like I'm a Bears fan. I've had like sure you get excited for like playoffs or whatever, but like I don't know. Like I feel like we don't have much to root for ever in those like you know big. Once you know we're we're not really looking like a playoff contender, there's like nothing that exciting to go for. When you have like the opportunity to mess up your rival, like you know qualifying for Europe, and there's not just Champions League, there's Europa League, there's relegation. Like there's there's so many more stakes in, and you don't get like the top draft pick when you do badly. You know, like yeah. there's incentive to keep pushing throughout the entire season. Whereas for the Bears, it's like you get to a point where it's like, oh, well, we don't want anybody to get too injured. So we're just going to play our second string and look terrible for the last three games of the season. And I'm like, okay, sweet. You know, I just don't want it to become. Does the MLS have that kind of thing too? No, no, they do not have uh, nowhere close to that. Okay. I was about to say, that's good then. I mean, they don't have relegation. But I mean, they have a close. No, there's no promotion relegation. They have a closed system where you know like no team like the idea behind the american soccer pyramid that could improve it to make it more like a european model would be would would be to include (laughs) yeah like to like have some kind of system between the usl championship usl1 usl2 so like a team like me like mine a small team can maybe make it up to those to those things and other teams but no owner no owner is going to take that risk. And so now instead there's all these other leagues, like now there's MLS next pro, which is like basically second division MLS because they want to keep their, they don't want, I, there's, there's, there's a million reasons, but um, you know, they, they're seeing the USL championship as a rising force. And so then that's on par with the MLS. So instead of creating like one big system, it's just, like there's NISA too. That's the National Independent Soccer Association. So that that's another professional league. So it's just it's just all over the place. Whereas in other countries, you know, you have seventh tier 
teams playing in the FA Cup or whatever. I know. You know That's amazing. You know. Yeah. Shout out to Grimsby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I am so happy about that. We'll talk about that later. But do you okay. Let me just ask you, Felipe. Um, do you think a team from the USL could be a team in the MLS right now? Wait, can you repeat that? Do you think a team from the USL could or UPSL could be a team in the MLS right now? Wait, U- USL? Well, it depends. There's USL Championship, USL One, USL Two. Any U- any USL like you any 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 team from USL and below, any team. Well, USL Championship teams beat MLS teams in the Open Cup. That's how uh they got. That's how San Antonio got to the final against Orlando okay. City. So, so the gap between USL Championship and MLS is minimizing significantly. And then there's USL One teams that beat. USL championship teams. So the gap, you know, it, I mean, like overall, all, you know, the leagues are, they improve incrementally, but the gap is, is minimizing between each, each, uh, each level um, as, as time goes on, as the, as the game grows. And they don't have the draft thing, the whole draft thing. Oh, wait, no, I think they do have, the they have an, thing. they yeah. have an MLS draft. I don't yeah. believe they have anything else though. Like for the USL, um, I, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't know where the majority of USL championship co- uh, players come from, whether it's like overseas or, or out of college at a D1 colleges. Uh, but yeah, I think the MLS draft is the only draft I'm aware of, uh, in the U S but there might be, there might be other ones I'm not aware of. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, everybody, that was the breaking news section. All right. Well, now let's go on. There we go, Michael Jackson. All right, so first, the league of the 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 first the okay, it's the Premier League. We will talk about the Premier League. All right, first place is Arsenal. Second place, Manchester City. Third place, Manchester United. Fourth place, Tottenham. There we go. Fifth place, Newcastle. And then twentieth place is Southampton. Oh, they are in trenches right now. All right, match day twenty five. Let us get into it. First game, Fulham Wolves one to one, a tie there. Newcastle Brighton. It was postponed due to Brighton because they did not have enough players to play the game. It's so sad. I, If you guys heard about the news, it's very sad. All right. Everton, Austin Villa, nil to two for Austin Villa. Leicester City, Arsenal, nil to one for Arsenal. West Ham United and Nottingham Forest, four to nil. West Ham dropping the hammer. <laughs> I wanted to use that analogy all week. But yes, they crushed the trees. That's not a... That's not a good analogy, but yeah, good for them. Leeds United and Southampton, 1-0 for Leeds United. Bournemouth, Manchester City, 4-1 for Manchester City. Aye, aye, aye. And then Crystal Palace, Liverpool, nil to nil. The Eagles got... I still don't know what Liverpool is. Are they the Griffins? Are they the Swans? I, I, don't, I don't know. Great. All right. And then Tottenham Jeez. and Chelsea. <laughs> 2 to nil for Tottenham, but it's okay. I will save my pay for another day. All right. Um... Anybody want to talk about? Oh, also Everton and Manchester United played today. Am I lying? Is that that? That's a lie. That's a lie. No, okay. yeah. Everton uh, and West... I I pranked yeah. you. I I pranked you. Wait, then. Oh, okay. Whatever. Never mind. If, um, okay, so Manchester United did play, but they played in the uh, FA Cup against West Ham United. Are not you? Yep. We know. We know. They're not. I think it was Wolves Liverpool, or they're playing tomorrow, or something like that. But it was Arsenal uh, Everton. No, they played today. No, it was. It was uh, it was Liverpool and Wolves today, and they lost uh, two nil. Wolves lost two nil. Uh, no, yeah, Liverpool, Wolves lost. Yeah, two-nil. Wolves lost two nil. My bad. Uh, this one I thought that was bad. in the Premier League though, and then Arsenal beat Everton four zero. Yep. Dude. Oh yeah, that game. Oh, oh. Dude, oh Saka, God. Saka, Saka. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys want to talk about any games that happened this past week? I mean. All right, well, yes. Veronica, Tony, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> on him, Chelsea. We were supposed to watch this game together, but no, you don't want to make so me... early. It was so early. It's so early. 7.30. Early? early? It could have been that was early. early. Well, because I have to drive. Like, oh, okay. like not just, like, get up we and watch up, it. I'll bet a pub or something like that, Mike. Come on. Well, yeah, what pub is going to be open watching Tottenham Hotspur in Chicago? Obviously, well, like, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in Chicago. Oh, yeah. 
Well, anyway. anyway. All right. Can, okay. Talk about the game because I honestly, so... <laughs> I can say just for my end. Um, where is the? Where is? The, let me just bring up the thing. Um, for Chelsea, I just think every player right now. It's time to go. <laughs> so that's that's my feelings in one button. So there we go. All right. Well, your turn, Veronica. Take the floor. So I'm gonna say something like negative first, and then I'll go positive. We're basically a couple weeks ago. I said if Spurs were gonna be in fourth, mm-hmm. I thought it was gonna be because other teams messed up, and not because we were good. And I think this game really cemented that opinion because I don't think Spurs were particularly good. We were just up for it, and Chelsea genuinely didn't look like they wanted they to play. Our charity FC. You're welcome. Uh, and I, they just really tried to focus on the wings, and they tried to focus specifically on Emerson Royale, which I thought was like pretty insane since he had really <laughs> good games against West Ham and against Man City. And he honestly bullied Chilwell. Like, him and Kulisewski had Chilwell really upset by the end of the game. Mm -hmm. They really didn't get any joy. And then we, I think, really just won by attitude because on the first goal, that skip goal, you can see great job by Skip. I'm so happy for him. He's an academy product. Uh, you know, he struggled with an injury last year, but I've always had a lot of hopes for him. And this was his first Tottenham goal at the stadium oh, against a rival yeah. that we he like scored never that beat. Bali right outside the box and hit the crossbar, went in. Kepa yeah. made it look beautiful. You're welcome. Kepa got fingers to it, but he hit it. It had like a pretty ridiculous dip on the end of yeah, it. it did. So it did. can't blame him that much. But but the ball came to him because Enzo Fernandez had a really bad clearance and then Jao Felix got pushed off the ball and he got the ball. He took like a pretty heavy touch. And then when he went to volley it, Raheem Sterling could have come out and closed him off, but didn't. And so you could see from that, that it's like, there just wasn't really that effort there from Chelsea where there was from Tottenham. And, you know, it makes sense from a Tottenham perspective. Chelsea's a huge rival. We always struggle against them. Like, even in times where we've had a really good team and Chelsea hasn't, we've lost before. So this was the first time we've beaten Chelsea in the league since 2018, since that, uh, like, iconic Sun goal where he destroyed Jorginho and David uh, Luiz. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, basically, really happy about that. But then also Kane scored, which is cool to have another Academy product score. Um, what but do you mean? He's you can see there, academy product. Uh, he ended his academy career at Adam Hotspur, but anyway, <laughs> <I know>. um, <laughs> so so uh, you know, that one was just weird because it's like, why are you having Raheem Sterling mark Harry Kane? That just seems like a mismatch. He to- totally loses his man, very bad, not good defending on the set piece by Chelsea, and so it's like the thing where. The performance itself, I think I kind of overlooked just by, like, the excitement of us beating Chelsea and the way the goals came about was great. But, you know, we we weren't great, and that's carried over into more recent form that I actually know nothing about because I don't know what the FA Cup is. Um, (laughs) Did you watch the game? uh, Yeah. (laughs) Oh, no! Dude, you know Grimsby? You know know Sasha Baron Cohen, Brother Grimsby? They made a movie about that town. Oh my god. About about Sheffield? No, Grimsby. Oh wait, no. Why am I I'm talking about Southampton right now. You know what? Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was gonna say what <laughs> I, I'm just happy Grimsby won, honestly. I wanna talk about that game yeah. so bad. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but anyway, so I'll wrap it up for my end. Happy for Chelsea to lose, happy for Spurs to win, but it's not a good outlook for the rest of the season. So I'm <gasps> I'm still worried. Oh, for- Yilmaz India scored for Sheffield United against Tottenham in the 79th minute. That's I, great. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the highlights. I mean, I, I'm reading off my head because I know this I game. told you I wanted to end positive. 17 <laughs> shots versus 7 let's shots. About, let's talk about Chelsea. Oliver Skip's goal was so good. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. Do you think that all of these Chelsea signings, because they're, they spend so much money on all – all these different personalities, all these different players that don't know each other, yes. that that's caused to lack a lot of chemistry. Oh, yeah, of think... course. I'm, I, I am the biggest critic of Chelsea FC, even though I have their 
you know, flag in my room right now, but I am the biggest critic of it. And I can happily say they are absolute wank right now. They're dog shite. They're absolutely binning right now. So, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Me, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to yeah, get a little more... survey. Let me give a little survey, Miller. One second. All right. Grandpotter in or grandpotter out? I'm just going to say that. Leave that question. So I'm going to ask Emilio right. first. Yes. Okay. I got to say grandpotter out. I okay. I mean, you lot are struggling right now. This this is banter FC at its finest. I'd say if you get rid of Potter like uh, like by the end of <laughs> by the end of the season, then I think you would find a better coach than Potter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um Felipe, do you want to say anything? Grand Potter in, Grand Potter yeah. out. Yeah, I never thought they should have fired Tuchel Tuchel. How do you say his name? <laughs> um, you know, like he, every coach has like those those spells of bad times. But the man won the Champions League. Uh, the, helped the team a lot. You know, they they faced diff many different injuries and everything to have an American owner take over and just spend all this money. Like this is some like, you know, it's it just doesn't work with a uh, uh, a Premier League club to to do that. Like a lot of clubs. They could, they they think very, they think for a very long time about the type of types of players they want, the 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 their weaknesses, what they need to improve on, and and I don't think any of that thought process was going on, and they just picked you know who was most available. So, uh, yeah, I think I think it's time for him to go. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And uh, Veronica, in or out? Ooh, in and so... out. Like burger place. I'm hungry. I was in where I was like, I I think he's a good coach and he deserves time. But I was reading uh, like a tactical review of the game. What I kind of like, what what the like has been pointed out, I think, in a couple different you know news or or tactics reviews is that Grant Parner is really moving away from like his style. And he's not really trying to coach his style anymore. So it's no longer like players trying to get used to Graham Potter's style. He just like is kind of in no man's land. He doesn't really know what he's doing. Yeah, it just seems like he's trying to find some element of control and it's just nowhere to be found. And I think maybe you need uh, – my suggestion would be Zidane because he kind of is a vibes manager. He has – like you know the clout to get people to like just listen to him no matter what and he's managed or Luis a ton Enrique. Of different... yeah either way like a ton of different big personalities i think Luis enrique is like way more tactics focused he's very like discipline based game oh, we don't so need you might not that. have You're right well, well the big thing is you might not have like the right players to do exactly what he's doing even though you did like there's so many like good players in a lot of positions but um, and I think he's a good coach, so he could get something out of it. But with like someone like Zidane, I think you'd make the most out of like the the big money signings that you have because I think he's pretty good at like managing people that don't necessarily fit together. And that's how I felt it was for him at Madrid is that yep. the players didn't necessarily fit a system, but they didn't need to because Zidane could make it work with just having these bits of talent capitalize on that's facts I think, um i think enchilani's good at that too yeah we're not gonna get him anytime soon but um <laughs> no. speaking of potter on freaking spotify and i played that what is this okay this should be, this should Wait, be are better. you serious yeah what, 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 look look at this shit look at this shit harry potter to be fair it does have the roblox on it is this better this might be better guys Is it gonna get me copyrighted? Um, I think it's like there's a certain time limit that it needs to be, or we need okay. to be like talking Ten over seconds. it or something. Oh, hurry. Ten yeah. seconds, I think. Oh, why is the Harry? What the hell is happening? Okay, you know what? Before anything, stop, stop, Michael Jackson, save me. <laughs> there we go. That's my default. <laughs> button. All right. Um, anybody want to talk about anything else in this league? I mean, we can talk about the FA Cup. So Grimsby. Two to one against uh, Southampton. Good for Grimsby. I'm happy about that. Southampton's absolutely bad right now. And then Man United versus West Ham United. West Ham, you were winning with, uh, I believe, 
Saeed Ben Rama scoring, and then own goal, of course, because West Ham like to help out people, and then uh, Alando Garnacho, the youngster from Argentina, scoring with his blonde hair. That's definitely what made it him score. And then Fred the Goat scoring in the 95th minute. So, hey, good for Manchester United. Did you watch that game, Emilio, or did you just follow up on the results? Uh, uh, I I watched the second half of it on, on TikTok because someone was uh, live streaming uh-huh. it. Okay. Huh? I mean, you do you. The game's the game. I like it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I, I'll watch however I'm going to watch it. I don't care if it's live stream oh. on Twitch or something. Okay. You know what? I'm kind of <laughs> pissed right now because I'm seeing the quarterfinals. Man City versus Burnley. Manchester United versus Fulham. Sheffield United versus Blackford, Blackford Rovers. Then Brighton versus Grimsby Town. The two teams I actually want to be in the final. Brighton and Grimsby Town are playing each other. Damn it. So, yeah. I'm going for oh, that. but you already know that Man City's got that. Like, it's, it's just yeah. nothing but a Sunday league to him. No way. Believe in yourself. I'm going for. I said, no. I said, I said, City, Man United. I'm, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I'm keeping my <laughs> mouth shut. I don't want to say yeah. too much. That's true. And Fulham are no joke. So, American yeah, Tim Ream is on there. That is true. <laughs> and also the another American Mitrovic. Jetty. He's, yeah. That's oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't hear Mitrovic got his passport. Oh, nice. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right, so now La Liga. First place is Barcelona. Second place is Real Madrid. Third place is Real Sociedad. Fourth place, Atletico Madrid. Then fifth place, Real Betis. And then 20th place is Elche. Ah, so bad. So bad. All right, match day 20. <laughs> Let's get in. Why are you laughing at me, mate? Come on. All right, match day 20. Let's get into it. Elche and Real Betis. Two to three for Real Betis. Great game here for Real Betis and a red card for Elche because they are not say Espanol and Malorca, 2 to 1 for Espanol. Then Cadiz and Real Vagano, 1 to 0 for Cadiz and a red card for Real Vagano because they are very naughty. Real Madrid and Nathalgo Madrid, 1 to 1. A great game. I, I think it was a great game. I only saw the first half, but yeah, fair enough. And a red card for Nathalgo Madrid because Diego Simeone says, Ooh, why not? Then Valencia and Real Sociedad, 1 to 0 for Valencia. Athletic Club and Girona, two to three for Girona. Great game here as well too, but Girona winning the game in the end. Celta Vigo and Valladolid, three to nil for Celta Vigo and a red card for Valladolid because there are so many naughty people in the La Liga. It's just a shame. All right, Alemania and Barcelona. Ooh, I picked the wrong time to get a Barca fan. <laughs> One to nil for Armenia. We'll talk about that. <laughs> then Sevilla and Asusun. I, I don't know how to say this name. Ash. Mm. Does anybody know how to say Asunia? Asasuna? Asasuna? Yes. Osasuna. Osasuna. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then two to the three for Osasuna and a red card for Sevilla because they are naughty. And then Villarreal and Getafe. Two to one for Villarreal. Good for them. And I mean, Emilio, do you want to talk about Real Madrid or Atletico Madrid? Did you happen to watch this game on Saturday, uh, February twenty fifth at three o'clock in the morning? At three o'clock in the morning. Oh, afternoon. Sorry. I'm in the wrong time zone as you. Uh, no, I did. I did watch. I did watch it. I thought it was a great, uh, a great game. I was laugh. I was laughing at the red card by uh by by Simeone. Did I say that right? Yes. Simon. Okay. Is that okay? There, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait. What was the red card? What happened? I. I don't know. That's the that's the thing that I that I had to. Oh, you you know what it was? I I, I don't know what it was. That's why uh, I'm asking you, you silly boy. I think he I th- I think he stepped I think he stepped on 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 I think he stepped on someone and cost oh, him Sim- a red card. Simeone? Yeah. No way. Ah, uh-uh. no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. You know what it was? You know what it was? It was an el- it was an elbow shot to the chest for Simeone. By uh by by Simeone by Simeone. Um, he. he Wait, well, no, no, I, no, no. You're lying. No, uh, no, he, no, Angel no. Correa. I'm not. I'm not. Huh? Angel Correa got the red card. Oh, oh, yeah. you. You trying to I say Simeone is in the UFC or something like that? What What are you talking about? I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> All right, but I can say at least Avro scored for La Liga, <laughs> Real Madrid, and then Jose Maria Jimenez scored for Atletico Madrid. So yeah, one one. All right. Well, we can move on to Barcelona. Um, Felipe, did you happen to see? This game at all? 
Yeah, I watched. I watched the second half. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it it seemed like they they as always you know held possession, but they couldn't do much. And Almeria's you know they're they're what place are they in in the league? Like fifteenth? Yeah, yep. like this. You know, not too definitely should have definitely should have been a win, but uh, it's all right. Barca's how many points clear right now? Seven. Seven points clear, so mm-hmm. it's okay. It happens. I think. I think after the Europa League uh, defeat, things are a little uh, <laughs> unsta- unstable. <laughs> what What was that but, laugh? What was that, Amelia? Was that you? Huh? Did yeah, you just laugh? it was him. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, the crap! I was like, "Is there a zombie behind me? What is it?" No, I, no, my bad, chief. <laughs> I mean, right. yeah, Barca. I mean. If you were here maybe two weeks ago, I had a great meme that said, right now it is cold and freezing and snowing in Madrid because it is right now negative seven degrees there. By negative seven, I mean they're negative seven points dropped from Barcelona. <laughs> ah, yeah. There you go. The meme is not there anymore. But hey, they're still ahead by seven points. So hey, fair hey, enough. You guys, you guys know El Clasico is tomorrow? I know. Yes. 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 But it's, it's for Copa del Rey. Is that right? Yeah, Copa del Rey. Yeah. Is this the final or is it just a game? No, it, no, this is the a, first. This is the semi- first leg of the semifinals. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's two legs for this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Copa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, and it's great. gonna be at at the Bernabiona. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like Barney Bernabion Barney. Bernabeu. The Berna Barney. Bernabe- oh, why I said that? I've said this. For like seven years, and I thought I got it right. So thank you for the correction. Wait, no, no, you're being serious right now. You're being I've serious. Been... Are you serious? Are you serious? I you am... were joking. <laughs> no, oh, I'm dead. I serious. thought you were. I've been... No, I've been bail. call... Yeah, <laughs> I've been calling that for like seven years, and no Can one. Can you has say that again, please? The... What Ben? Be... 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 God dang it! You put me on a spot. I'm nervous now. You don't have to do it. Don't give in to peer pressure. Ben Abu. <laughs> ben Abu. Oh my god. You I, know what? I, 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 I have one thing to say about that. that is uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Lovely stuff. All right. Oh. Um, do you guys want to hear the other Harry Potter song? <laughs> okay, you know what? Uh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll move on. All right. So now we can go through. Everybody put their hands up for the pasta. City. Yeah, that's not racist. All right. So first place is Napoli. Second place is Inter Milano. Third place is AC Milano. Four places Lazio, fifth place at Roma, then twenty places Sampdoria, and ah, they're not good right now. Next, then twenty four match day twenty four. Let us get into it. Empoli and Napoli, nil to two for Napoli. Red card for Napoli because why not? You know, winning and can get feisty. We like that. The Ness and Sassuolo, nil to one for Sassuolo. Then Bologna and Inter Milano, one to nil for Bologna. I st- I still say Bologna because I'm hungry. Then Salernitana in Monza. 3 to nil for Salernitana. Great for them. Battering Monza. And a red card for Monza because naughty, naughty. Udinez and Spezia. 2-2. Two to two. A draw here, but a great game. Etsy Milano and Atalanta. 2-0 to nil for Etsy Milano. Then Verona and Florentina. Nil to 3 for Florentina. Battering Verona. Great for them. Lazio and Sampdoria. 1-0 to nil for Lazio. Cremonose and Roma. 2-1. to one, Bringing down the... Um, the gladiators at the Roman Colosseum. Oh, I tried. You know what? I'll it. <laughs> then Juventus and Torino, four to two for Juventus. Great win for them. So yeah, I mean, anyone want to talk about any games here? I can talk about Inter because I did watch that game, and uh, all my teams lost this weekend. All my bloody teams lost this weekend. So I can't really say anything. Any anybody want to talk about anything in the city? Uh, or you can say your favorite. You know, pasta. Whatever. Six, five points. Napoli is is at sixty five points. Yeah. Wow. So they they're got, ahead. They're ahead just by a little bit. They got a lockdown. Yeah. And the and Champions League too. Did Juventus already get this uh, point deduction? Yeah, they did. They're, yeah, they did. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, they were in like I think eleventh place or tenth place, something like that. But then they're working their way up. So hey, four games in a row they've won. They're showing it that you know. No matter what the president does, it's okay. That no, okay. I don't. I don't mean that. But you know, shifting away from this conversation, talking about like financial fair play thing. Do you see anything happening with Man City? 
Or probably, I really I, hope so. I want them to get relegated to the championship. That would be the best thing that's ever happened to me. I would, I, I would happily be. I would, I would want Chelsea to be, you know, relegated with Man City. That would make me so happy <laughs> to see Here's my the own. Thing, though, yes. Like I feel like I, I'm cynical, maybe, but I feel like they're <laughs> like they're not going to do anything, or maybe they're. There was this what? white paper that was. Are well, you saying? They're here, gonna get here. <laughs> what? Okay, yeah. There was a white paper published by like uh some like politician or a politician's team in in England that was like doing a review of the Premier League structure mm-hmm. and whether it's fair and stuff like that. And you think the Premier League is like, oh god, we have to show the like them that we have stuff under control. And they released this thing being like, Yeah, we've been investigating Man City for like four years. But the problem is if they set that precedent, I think a lot of teams are going to have things to answer for, including your uh, beloved Chelsea. Yes, we're um, going to get relegated. Please do it. Please do it. I'm ready. I and, want- <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I don't know everything about Tottenham Hotspur, but I'm pretty sure not everything has been done properly since our sporting director is like going to be banned from doing work for like two years or whatever. Um, so I think like, if they start doing things like relegating people, not that I'm saying it's not fair, but it's like that might not be a long-term solution more than like a little blip that doesn't solve the problem. So I just, I don't know. I guess it, a bigger a bigger impact would be just putting restrictions in place that people actually have to follow and having real-time consequences for things in the future more than going backwards and taking away awards and relegating the team and stuff like that. I yeah, just don't God know forbid they take away Man City's Champions League trophies. That would be terrible. <laughs> that would be great. That would be Got terrible. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> let's move on to the <laughs> Wait, wait, I have a quick, a quick Syria comment. Do you yeah. guys know Benito Mussolini's great-grandson plays for Lazio like he was no the way time. what yeah for real for real what? <laughs> I learned this over the weekend that's so crazy. he was on the that's, bench oh, that's for Lazio funny. what's it's crazy what's his name uh, Mussolini <laughs> is, oh, imagine if his last he, name is actually Mussolini no it no. is it is Mussolini it's Romano Floriani Mussolini and he wears Floriani on his shirt so that he doesn't like Wear Mussolini's name no, on the shirt you're, when you're he's ca- playing. You're capping right now. You're capping right now. I, what's I am it? not. What's I am name? not. What's his name? Uh, it's Romano Floriani Mussolini. Romano Fornicano. <laughs> Bernadette. Well, I don't see it. Here, I'll what? send you the article. I don't. I think you're prank. You're doing a prank me. You're doing a prank I... thing. I Where's would the camera? Never prank. Where's the camera? You <laughs> silly. Where's the pop- camera? <laughs> Wait, okay, Ashton so his... Kutcher, where are you? Oh, yeah, God. exactly. <laughs> wait, wait, so wait, um, his name is Roma. Type in, uh, like search Mussolini great grandson. Was it'll he, was up. he on the bench for um Lazio? Yeah, Lazio this past weekend. It, it'll come up as like Floriani or whatever. I'm oh not... no, it was against Verona. Who oh. did they play this weekend? So Lazio played Sampdoria this weekend. So it might have not have been this week, been another another game. But he does. Um, he like Sa- was literally on the bench against Sa- Verona. Was he? Oh, was it Verona? Yeah. God, I just I really want to see this man's name. Oh, no, that's on him. That's a cool name. Though. <laughs> Sorry. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you're Google searching, there's liter- literally no, an article. No, 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 I'm not Google searching. Oh, it wasn't okay. Uh, okay, I will yes. say it was recently. Now that I'm looking at it, I think it just mm. popped up on my Twitter recently. But he's part of their like program or whatever. I believe you. You I'll send me. you the article. I All promise. Right. Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now let us go on to Bundesliga. Jawohl. All right. So. First place for Bundesliga Bayern München, second place Dortmund, third place Union Berlin, fourth place RB Leipzig, fifth place uh, Freiburg, and then 18th place the Schalke going down. Match day 22, let's get into it. Mainz and Bayern München Gladbach, 4 0 for Mainz battering Bayern München Gladbach. 
beautiful for Mainz. Hertha Berlin and Augsburg, 2-0 for Hertha Berlin. Hoffenheim und Dortmund, 1-0 for Dortmund, great job for them. Köln and Wolfsburg, 0-2 for Wolfsburg. Then Werder Bremen and Bochum, 3-0 for Werder Bremen. Then this game, they gave me depression. RB Leipzig <laughs> and Eintracht Frankfurt. 2 to 1 for Eintracht Frankfurt. And they had a good shit for Frankfurt. Good for Frankfurt. <laughs> Basically, I said that the shit. Yeah, so um, RB Leipzig, Timo Werner scored the weirdest goal I've ever seen in my life because that is Timo Werner. And as he says, what is this? I, I mean, I, I still want him at Chelsea just for the vibes. But yeah, Leipzig won that one. Then Schalke and Stuttgart, 2 to 1 for Schalke. Then Feidberg and Leverkusen, 1 to 1. And the game of the weekend, quest quotations, Bayern versus Union Berlin, first place versus third place, or it was second place. This was going to be the game of the tournament. And if you guys didn't know, before all these games happened, Bayern, Dortmund, and Union Berlin all had 45 points, I believe, all tied together. And yeah, of course, um, no surprises, Bayern beat Union Berlin 3 to nil, a battering against them, and proves again why Bayern is going to win the league again, and no surprises. So, yeah. <laughs> Sleepy time. Uh, oh, 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 wait. Speak, speaking of... Sleep, just you guys wait, because speaking of uh-huh. sleepy time, I do have something I want... No, no, no. Don't. I know you're scared. I I know you are... You know, you know um, Emilio, I sometimes mm-hmm. I cannot find the buttons, so I can't even... Okay, you know what? I'm going to stop quit waffling. Did you guys watch any of the Bundesliga games at all? I did it, but I do have a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> no, continue. This music's gonna keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, I played against Hertha Berlin uh, in January when they were down in uh, Florida for like their like after the World Cup, the Bundesliga had like a brief pause, and so they were playing some friendlies against uh, Florida teams, and then we got to play them. Uh, and we we got destroyed seven one, but it was a good experience. Oh. Did you score? That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, we That's scored cool. first. We scored first. Like we we were winning one zero for like Ooh. eight minutes, and I think we got a, <laughs> I think we got a little cocky about it because then suddenly they just started. But I mean, they were definitely shocked at first. That's a flex scoring against a Bundesliga team. Oh my gosh! Imagine that. That's something That's to put cool. on your CV. That, that is awesome for, man. for eight. For eight minutes. <laughs> did, you, did you? Were you For on the field when you were playing them? Yeah, no, I I started and I play oh. I played like seventy minutes that that game. Nice. How was the fitness level compared to you guys? Yeah, it's it's a whole it's a whole nother level. Uh huh. I'm sure, but that's cool. Fitness <laughs> wasn't really the issue. It was just their it was it it was fitness really wasn't the issue. It was just their their Pace? movement off the ball. Their pace, but their movement off the ball was on another level. Like you can't track them. They're they're, you know, you got, you got all of them. Their midfielders, like the complexity of the of how they rotate around. It's like you, you don't know what you're playing against. And so then, suddenly you got the wing backs being part of the attack, and then it's just you're just at that point you're just fighting to survive. It's 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 a tough. It's a tough situation, but it was it was a good experience regardless. That's cool. That's a huge flex playing against a Bundesliga team. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. And uh, okay, well now we can go on to League One, which is actually called the Uber Eats League. So good for that. So first place is BSG Paris Saint Machiders, and then Marseille second place, <laughs> third place Monaco, fourth place Lyon, fifth place Rennes, and then twenty place is Angers. Merci beaucoup. Twenty five match day twenty five. To get into it, Lille and Brest, two to one for Lille and a red card for Brest because Brest are bad. Oh, all right, Angus and Lyon, <laughs> one to three. Don't laugh. Don't, don't, don't you snicker. All right, one to three for Lyon. Montpellier and Lyon, one to one. Another game that made me sad because Montpellier, my beautiful team, very sad. Lyon and Aya, nil to one for Aya. Then Clermont Foot and Strasbourg, one to one. Another tie there. We love ties. Azashio and Troyes. Two to one for Azashio on a red card for Toyas because bad. Nance and Ren one to nil for Ren. Rimes and Teleus three to nil for Rimes. 
and great for them. Battering Toulouse, Monaco, and Nice. <laughs> you know what I gotta say about this one? <laughs> you know what I gotta say? Nice job for Nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is very funny. Where's the button that's for funny? Okay, Jeff. All right, <laughs> myself. Okay, Marseille Where's... and PSG. Three to nil for PSG. Great job for them. Same thing with the Bundesliga thing. Same thing for here. PSG, they're dominant. Messi is amazing. Mbappe is a ninja turtle. And Neymar is probably with his sister. So, all right. Anyone want to say anything about Ligue 1? I got nothing for Ligue 1. Oh, let's go! That's class! <laughs> all right. Well, that's great news. All right. Um, so now for <laughs> Champions League. Uh, it is next week. And the games are coming fast. I mean, they're coming as usual, as I don't know what I'm saying. So, yeah. Anybody want to say anything about Champions League? We did talk about this results last week. Anyone want to say anything about Champions League? Well, you know, Spurs are going to have to win the whole thing. Got knocked out of their domestic tournament. Not going to win the league. So, I guess just got to turn this thing around. Win the Champions League. So. Hey, who? Oh, spot! I I always forget Tottenham's in the Champions League. I'm not disrespecting. Oh my you, god! <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. That was insane. Wow. Fair, they're, they're playing at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, so they could always, you know, sell out the crowd and lose yep. too. Oh god! Come on. <laughs> this is, it's kind of crazy looking at the teams left in the Champions League right now. Like it's not. There's a lot of, I guess, smaller teams. Yeah, that can yeah go teams far. you wouldn't expect. Yeah, like um, uh, uh, Benfica is actually really good. Yep. Yeah, Porto. You got Club Brugge, Benfica. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. basically, Real Madrid is going to win this thing again, huh? No, oh. Napoli. It'd be fun. Oh, if Napoli wins, I'm going to be so happy. I mean. Honestly, if any team besides, you know, the big... Like, I'm actually kind of happy that PSG played Bayern, Milan played Tottenham, Dortmund played Chelsea, and yeah. Liverpool played Madrid, the big teams against each other, because yeah. then it gives, like, you know, some other teams maybe... Okay, you know, Man City's not going to win it. Come on. We can all agree that Man City's not going to win it, because they're, yeah, they're not gonna win it. poor as no, well, too. Yeah. Nah, they're not going to. If Leipzig I wins... Would... I would love Leipzig to knock them out. That'd be amazing. Timo Werner, the goat's got it. Don't you worry about it. I know. <laughs> Timo's and in, got it. And Nkunku, a future Chelsea player. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's next week, and we will talk about that next week. So, all right. Europa League. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, so, these are the games that happen. PSV, Sevilla, 2 to 0 for PSV. And Nantes and Juventus, 3 to nil for Juventus. And, you know, they went on. Midgeland and Sporting Lisbon, uh, 4 to nil. And Sporting goes on. Monaco, Leverkusen. This was a great game, actually. I happened to do the, the, the English. Oh, my God. What was that? Leverkusen did go on to win the penalties and go on. Uni Berlin, Ajax. Uni Berlin went on. Roma, Salzburg, 2 to nil for Roma. How sad there. Again, in Shakhtar Donetsk. I did watch this as well, too, so... Ah, I'm very confused by the score. Two to one. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. There was two games. Five to four for penalties for Shakhtar. That was a great time, too. And then Manchester United and Barcelona. Ooh, okay. You know what? I'm just going to hand hand the ball over to Felipe. Do you want to talk about this football game, this beautiful football game that happened? Yeah, I mean, Man, Man United deserved it. Uh, um, Barcelona looked like the... The the weaker team for sure without Gavi or Pedri, and uh, even you know I think that game really exposed players like Busquets, even you know being uh one of the senior players on Barcelona, just shows Barcelona need to keep infusing the team with youth. Um, but overall, Man United deserve it. They're they're in form. They have great players. Rashford's killing it. Um. And and yeah, I think if if Man United is going to get revenge on Barcelona for 2009 and 2011 Champions League, then you know a Europa League round of whatever this is, it's completely fine with me. <laughs> yeah, true. Huh. Well, okay. Well, let me just remove this behind. So I guess the round of 16 
It's coming up, so that they already drawed it. Sporting Lisbon versus Arsenal. Union <laughs> Berlin versus Union Saint. I do not know where they are from. Where is that? Union Saint. You know what? I actually do know this because, as you guys know, um, let me just do my serious thing really fast. So, um, I am. I've been Hey guys, it's break. I am identifying what EPN stains you look up because I am definitely built in so as they, they are okay, they're, they're a Belgium league and that was top of my head, I already knew that and they're second place in the Belgium league and they play actually Antwerp tomorrow and the location is in San Gilles, Belgium owner Tony Bloom, not confused with Tony Romo, the Cowboys player and their capacity is 9,400, which are indeed seated, not heated. All right. You didn't need to know that. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> and uh, Ferran Barajaros. All right. That's um, anybody can guess where this is from. Anybody? You want to guess? Because I know it. <laughs> Obviously, they're playing the. Croatia? Uh. Hungary, okay, oh. all right. Big, pick up Hungary. We like that. I know Hungarian bad language. I'm not going to see it on the show. All right, great. Then Roma and Real Sociedad, Shakhtar Donetsk and Feyenoord, and Union, Manchester United and Real Betis, and then Juventus, Freiburg, then Sevilla and Fenerbahce. I mean, I don't know. I I have a feeling Manchester United can get far in this. Arsenal obviously can get far in this. Union Berlin also have a shout of getting far. Freiburg. Underdogs, I definitely say for them. Yeah. Um, anybody want to say anything about Europa League? Yeah, I've got something to say about it. Okay, uh, yes. and, 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 Fel- and Felipe, this is not going towards you, okay? So no, this no, is no, going no. towards is going... every other Barca fan, okay? And Andrew can agree with me on this, all right? Let me just stand up real quick. Okay. <clears throat> Barca fans. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Wait, wait. Let me, let me talk. Let me talk. Let me, let me talk. Let me talk. I'm letting you talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Barca fans, I kept my mouth shut, <laughs> and I heard all and I heard all all the things on TikTok. Yep, yeah? I've heard. You know, I'm from Man United to go pack their bags because you know. Because Barcelona, we we got this. Oh, Manchester United ain't nothing. No, you we, you like know, you're in love with Manchester United. I oh, I'm I'm deeply in love with him. You know what happens you, when you're no, in love I, with Manchester yeah. United? Huh. Oh my god, this guy <laughs> saying your love for Manchester United. <laughs> soundtrack. And and I've been hearing all this on TikTok. Mm. I kept my mouth shut. So when when Bruno Fernandes made that mistake giving you a penalty okay you could have handled you could have hold that three two lead barcelona should have look what happened barcelona couldn't even couldn't even handle a three two lead yeah we got fred who scores out of nowhere and then we got anthony doing what he does scoring from the left of his foot Brazilian. We win a 4-2 lead that Barcelona could have could have won a 3-2 lead. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I was happy the next day when Barcelona fans were silent as I hear the tears running through their <laughs> y'all's faces. Yeah? So I don't want to hear nothing throughout this entire Europa League about hoping that Manchester United will, will lose. Barcelona ain't even in Europa. All right? We play. We were in the playoffs. Barca just played off. All you got to do is just watch. Hmm. You know, you can have your La Liga. You you can have your league title, but the one thing you won't have is your Europa title. So enjoy that. Think about that the next time you want to go bantering us off. And uh, that's all I gotta say. Dropping the mic. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Woo! See, I'm supportive. <laughs> Excuse you, a ton of support. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a safe, safe space. All right, um, <laughs> Felipe, you have anything you want to say about Emilio's remarks towards your beautiful and nice club? 
<laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. Oh my god, okay. All right. Damn it. I expected a like I said, hey, it's not I'll, I'll going be, towards I'll you, be, Felipe. I'll, it's it's just Barca fans in general. I'll be ha- I'll be happy to see both Barca and Manchester United in the Champions League next year. So that'll be That's nice. True. Imagine yeah. they'll come up against each other again. Oh, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, and if, yeah, no, no, yeah, and if, Barca, if Barca much. fans start talking about it now, I'm keeping my mouth shut and watching the results. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Europa League, that was it. Okay. Now let us go on to the best time of the week, and that, of course, is football memes of the week. Brought to you by Ravels Benters and Football Memes for the Lads. Thank you. This is Akun 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 Football, the beast himself. Who is a sponsor for this one thing in the show? All right, let us see the first meme. So, <laughs> Ton Hosper, days since last shit show. Here we go again. Oh, you... no. I'm not even that upset about that because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yeah, it's true. Whatever. You're in top four right now. So, I mean, good for you. Yeah, but it just doesn't, you know, it's the outlook. That's the problem. The don't belief. say outlook. Don't say outlook. I don't want to hear that word while I'm off work right now. The game work. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> they're they're coming back to win the Champions League, so don't you worry. Tottenham Hotspur, yeah. they got it. Yeah? You're totally right. Absolutely. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. All right. So, now, guys, um, Manchester United did happen to win the Energy Drink Cup. And... I can't believe breaking news. Where's the breaking news? Guys, guys, breaking news button. Where is it? Uh oh. All flights in England have. Wait, no, no. You know what? I, I have even a better thing. Where's my. The full thing? Okay, guys, just, just hold, hold up a. Hold. Hold. I don't know what you're holding, but hold. Where is it? 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 Yes, okay, yes. cabinet to put their league cup in it <laughs> yeah that's that, that was too much but you know what yeah we gotta banter united at least while they're you know doing <laughs> so hey emilio congrats on winning the energy drink cup i hope you drink a lot of energy drinks of carbaro so good for you. uh you you know what surprisingly i was drinking a monster while watching the cups <laughs> yeah, oh, that's not yeah. carbaro you cheater how dare you you know what they need to make uh, okay, it okay well it's, it's it still an prime, energy drink isn't it prime they need to make a prime energy drink come. You know what? Surprisingly, I do have a prime energy drink. And I do have one right next to me right now, too. So, hey, shout out Prime because Cheers. we are sponsored. <laughs> and I we're going to keep sponsoring until KSI comes to the yeah, show. No, 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 no. <laughs> prime. I know you're I know I know the admin watches the show and that you always like my comment when I tag Prime on the story. So get KSI on here, please. Get that big forehead on here. Get JG on here. All right. Cheers. All right. Now the next meme. <laughs> so Messi, the FIFA best eleven award was on here, like it matters for anything. So Messi went from competing with Ronaldo to competing with a kid who grew up idolizing Ronaldo. <laughs> Oof! If that's a mic drop, I don't know what else is. He is in a picture <laughs> next to Mbappe. He won against him, and then in a picture against Ronaldo when he was younger. Won against him then too. Yikes. <laughs> Yeah, and oh, another video I saw which was very funny. Um, so usually Messi after wins the award goes in to kiss his wife, and um, <laughs> I don't know if you saw the video. He Uh-oh. his wife usually sits, like right next to him, and um, he he went in to kiss him puppy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it was so funny, and then, like he like he like firmed it, but like um like. Just shaking his hand really quick because he was like like <laughs> leaning towards him, and he just shook his hand, and then he went to his wife. He's like, "Thank God that didn't happen." But I'm like, <laughs> like he wanted it, so hey, I gotta see that. Yeah, look it up, please. Look it up. It's it's hilarious. All right. <laughs> okay, so we do have actually one more segment on the show, and that was football means of the week, by the way. And this is for you, Felipe. This is gonna be a quick fire little thing. 
I'm not going to give you any time to answer because this is important towards your future career as a Premier League player. Got it? Okay. Good. All right. So these are called the golden questions. I do have a um, theme song for this. So the golden questions is basically just this. <clears throat> No, I'm going to play. Oh, yes. Yes. All right. So the golden questions. Here you go. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So first, who was your first favorite player that made you fall in love with a beautiful game of football? Ronaldinho. Oh, okay. I like it. Ronaldinho. Hey, me too. Me too. Then who is your first favorite football team? Barza. All right. Then, number three, what is your favorite football match that you have ever been to and why? Been to in person? Yes, indeed. Well, I it has to be uh, the a game in Barcelona that I got to see uh, Barcelona play for the first time ever at the Camp Nou. Um, and it was the second to last game before Iniesta retired. And he had a beautiful assist uh, to Messi and I got to watch it with my two of my closest friends so great it was a great oh, experience that's amazing that's amazing all right and then who is your favorite player of all time Messi. <laughs> Messi. okay fair enough fair enough and then number five second last question who is currently your favorite player in the world i mean i have to say Messi again oh like there we go <laughs> after that world cup performance it's, yep. it's hard to hard to make any other any other uh give any other answers all right fair enough and then the most important question which is the last question question number six this is an important question are you ready for this one i'm ready right who do you think is the most underrated cricket player of all time (laughs) (laughs) huh um I that answer thank you very much okay well everybody oh thank you for joining on the show <laughs> and let me first say felipe it's been an honor to have you on me i'm sorry i kept you past your bedtime it is definitely late and i this you, this show is usually less than an hour but we had fun we had definitely fun on it so hey i had a great time this is this is a lot of fun i, I hope i can be back sometime this was yeah. a really good time it was, it was nice meeting all of you guys you guys should follow me on instagram um and yeah it was yeah. really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we wish you luck with your journey as a footballer. And of course, we'll have you back on, of course. So, you know, we need to banter uh, Barcelona and Emilio needs to rip on you again. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, good. no, that's like one. That's like once in a lifetime. I'm pretty sure that's never going to happen again in like the next five years. Well, we'll see if Man United lose. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then also, Emilio, thank you for being on as well, too. Always a pleasure having you on. And um, especially when you say the most outrageous things like this, the the Bernabeu. I like the Bernabeu. That's cute. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Madrid and literally say that. I think I'm going to a Barca game actually this year, and I'm gonna go say this year, and I'm gonna go say, "Hey, where's the Santiago Bernabeu in Madrid?" And people are gonna look at me and like, "It's fucking me." <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mel Mio, thank you for being on. It was lovely. Uh- Ah, oh, it's it's always great to have to be on the on the show and say like Veronica say safe space. Huh? Oh, okay, yeah. So, so, I thought you said <laughs> Veronica has a safe face. I'm like, you know, no, like, yes, no, like, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I no. As Veronica say it says it's a safe space oh, here. It's a safe space. It's a safe <laughs> space. Yeah. I agree. Okay, and of course, Veronica, thank you for being on as well too. And you know what? Let me rip on you because Chelsea right now. <laughs> They are oh. absolutely dog shite. So that's true. Misery loves company, so I'll accept it. Yo, company scored that really nice goal against yeah. Was- <laughs> <laughs> against Leicester? Yes, that was that was the only company I want to see. Alright. So everybody, thank you for watching the show. And like, subscribe, and share it. Because all about like subscribing and sharing it. How else are you gonna know that I'm gonna thumbnail this video? the Luis Enrique and Ancelotti thing or PSG under fire or 
I don't know, maybe saying that a Madrid fan doesn't know how to say their own stadium. I don't know. It's gonna <laughs> Hey. <laughs> burn up you. Let's go. I'm gonna catch a burn up you. Oh, a Pokemon. <laughs> uh, should I put the Harry Potter song? In? <laughs> you know what? I don't. I've done enough editing. Fine. All right, everybody. <laughs> thank you for joining the show. And thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, thank you for watching on YouTube and on Spotify. And of course, as we say on the show, repeat after me. One. One. <laughs> oh, one love football. <laughs> no, I, I said at oh. the same time. You talked oh. up. All right, ready? One love football. One love football. One love, oh. Oh, okay, now we say it. <laughs> okay. One love football. Thank you guys for watching, and bye-bye. Later.